Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll go over the concept of pointers. To get an understanding of pointers, we must take a few steps back and talk about a few other things. Let's begin. Let's say we had two variables, integer x initialized to some value and integer y initialized to some value. I now want you to create I want you to create four variables to store the sum subtraction multiplication and division of x and y I also want you to make sure that x always appears before y in your four variables. I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and do this. Okay, hopefully you did something equivalent to what I am about to do. You created some variable and you ensure that x appeared before y and you stored the sum. You did the same thing for the following Because we have two integers, when we're doing our division, we can keep it as integers. Now, let us try to observe what we have done so far. We initially had two variables, integer x and integer y, initialized the values of 10 and 2, respectively. We then created four more variables to store the sum, the subtraction, the multiplication and division of x and y. And we accomplished this by using operators that we probably learnt at a young age, that being the plus operator, the subtraction operator, the multiplication operator, and finally the division operator. And if we wanted to, we could obviously print out these values. We should hopefully get the values of 12, 8, 20, and 5. And so we do. But the question is, are these the only operators available to us? The answer is of course no. We're not we are using a computer and we're using a specific programming language. And all these languages have things specific to them. In this example, we're using C++, which also comes with a unique set of operators. One of those operators are called the reference operator, which is also shared by the language C. And it allows us to do something like this. If we were to console output using the ampersand sign, followed by some variable, this will actually output the memory location of variable x. What is the memory location? Remember, everything we do must be stored in memory. When our computer or laptop is on, it has been stored in a volatile memory called RAM. Once we save our files, they are stored in non-volatile memory, that being your hard drive or your solid state drive. So this right here, this operator, let me zoom in. This operator, called the ampersand sign, works like this. When it appears in front of a variable, it says console output the memory location of whatever variable follows it. So in this case, if we did a console output, notice this value here. This is the memory location of our variable x. More specifically, 
where it is stored in memory. The 0x means what follows is hexadecimal. So this here is the hexadecimal memory location. And we can do the same thing for variable y. You go ahead and complete this line. So to access the memory location of y, we use the ampersand sign and we type in y. We complete the end line and we can output the memory location of variable y. And there we go. Both the memory location of x and y output to the console. What if, actually, never mind what if, I want you to store the memory location of x in some variable. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Now, if you have no concept of pointers, you probably had no idea how to store the memory location of an address. Here is how we do it. The first thing we identify is the type of the variable. So in this case, I want you to store the memory location of x. Well, what is x? We notice above x is an integer. Therefore, we type in integer, followed by whatever variable name. In this case, I will say x pointer, and then pass in x. Now, what do you think this will do? Now, intuitively, you'll know that this will just create another variable called x pointer which will hold the same value as x, which is not what we want. Well, you're probably saying, okay, I know that the ampersand sign or ampersand operator will allow us to grab the memory location, <coughs> the memory location of some variable. So you use the ampersand sign. Okay, great. So you say the ampersand sign will give you the memory location of some variable. Do you think that this will be able to store the memory location of the variable x? The answer is no. We have to do one more thing. We have to use something called the dereferencing operator, which is just the multiplication operator. That. What this says is, create a variable called x pointer. It is an integer. Well, no, it's not an integer. What it is actually is a variable that can store the memory address of only integers. And luckily, x is an integer. And to grab the memory location of x, we use the ampersand sign. So now if we do something like console output x pointer, and we pass in, let's just say the equals to, and we, de we use the reference operator, so the ampersand sign, this value should be equal if everything went right. And here we go. Memory locations are equal. We have successfully stored the memory location. Wait, oh. <laughs> we have successfully stored the memory location of our variable x in another variable, more specifically a pointer of type integer. And we can do this again. Now, I want you to store the memory location of variable y in some variable and then output it to the console. I'll give you a few seconds. Now, again, the first thing, as I said, identify what type of variable we are working with. In this case, integer y is an integer. So we type in y. We pass in the dereferencing operator, which is a multiplication sign, followed by some variable name such as y pointer. We then use the assignment statement and we say reference using the ampersand operator and the variable. We'll then console output y pointer. Let me get rid of these. Don't need that. y pointer. And just to make sure these two memory locations are equal, I'll do that y. We build and run. That's an old run. Now we build and run. And there we go. We see that the pointer, y pointer, and the memory address of y are both the same. And that's it. That is what pointers do.
but we can take it one step further. We can actually access the values at the memory locations. How do we do that? We again use a dereferencing operator and pass in the pointer name, or the point, well, yes, the pointer name. And now this should output the value 2. And there we go, just as if we were working with the variable y and not y pointer. And just as if we were working with the variable y, we can work with the variable y pointer. So if I do plus equals 5, and if I console output the value of y, this should be 2 plus 5 outputting the value of 7. And there we go, 7. Now, you may be asking, why even use pointers then? Why don't I just use the values of x and y? This is a brief video giving you a brief understanding of pointers. When you begin learning more advanced concepts, such as data structures, linked list, the linked list implementation of stacks and queues, the true value of pointers will surface when you start working with dynamic memory allocation, deallocation. This video was simple and straightforward. If it helped you, don't forget to like the video. That's all.